narratives, narratives. We no need no stinking narratives. Well, we are the people the narratives are about. Hello, this is Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. This will be a short video as an addendum to my last video concerning the worst ever uh, exposition of war in Yugoslavia. Uh, now, uh, I wouldn't go bothering uh, my readers uh, with this uh, if it weren't that I haven't pointed out the main thing uh, in the previous video, and I'll just use this opportunity to, to, to point it out and uh, to point out why is it so important to have this in mind, namely the fact that Westerners and even Easterners, if they think they are, or feel that they are part of some kind of empire, like, God forbid, the Russian or Eurasian Empire, uh, have a temerity to interpret the world in a Manichaean uh, <coughs> terms, supposedly uh, to alleviate the sufferings of the poor. And the poor are prob uh, usually the people in the Middle East, but even the people of Eastern Europe, where I live. And I've, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, quote a few passages from one Montenegrin uh, leftist author with whom I don't agree on many things, but I agree uh, on most important thing about this subject, I do agree, where he proves <laughs> in a few sentences that this concern for the well-being of, of poor little natives is completely hypocritical and it's in fact imperialist uh, to the core. I don't like this word imperialist because it was practically co-opted by the left, but it is accurate to describe the way of thinking uh, uh, about which I was talking in my last video about Tom Sackers. Uh, he reacted uh, on my video, you'll see uh, his elaborate and detailed refutation of what I said. Uh, in uh, so I'll mention his name uh, openly, and uh, you, you'll see his answer not to not to to in any kind of way um, puff up my ego, but to to show just what kind of mentality this is, because he discloses what he is in one sentence unmistakably. Anyway, this article in question is called Undermining Solidarity in the Balkans, reviewing Boris Malagurski's The Weight of Chains. The Weight of Chains, we won't go into this movie, this is, I'll just mention, this is the movie by one Boris Malagurski about the breakup of Yugoslavia and the gist of the movie is that Yugoslavia was broken up by economical nation assassination by IMF and so on and so forth and in the course of the movie first thing he does is to alleviate uh, the blame hierarchy of blame for wars in Yugoslavia among peoples uh, in, uh, that were in <clears throat> participating in those wars and then ends up completely whitewashing the Serbs <laughs> and that's how it always ends up with these leftist authors, like this one, and uh, um, it's fascinating is that he white washes the the most right wing from the leftist perspective, the most fascist uh, real time existing regime in Europe in the nineties. For people like Sergei Trivkovic, he is the one. Who appears in this movie, and people like Milosevic, Jovica Stanisic, Franko Simatovic, etc., etc., and Vojislav Sheshe, the crown jewel, and the main clown among the killers, the main killer among the clowns. But we won't go into these nooks and crannies of who is who of uh, Balkan's bloodbath. Uh, but we'll just uh, quote this uh, Kilibar, Konstantin Kilibarda's. Uh, arguments about some, uh, let's say, um, more general problems that, that, that come out from this approach or, or upon which this approach has been founded. Uh, by the way, Kilibarda is Montenegrin. And I do recommend reading this article. I will, will put the link.
And once more, I'll say I don't agree on many things with him. Just don't take. I I hate making caveats. But this will be first and last caveat, namely that I am not a leftist, and there are some things he says that that are true. Painting a too broad canvas, uh, not concerning Yugoslavia, but uh, but concerning the principles of politics. Uh, when I quote you, you soon hear what I'm what I'm talking about. Now. He says, there are three most problematic assumptions that undergird such distorted positions among progressives are worth reviewing, namely positions that uh, the NATO, everybody uh, in some way targeted by NATO, of USA or whatever, is uh, from the West, is a good guy, proverbial white hat, John Wayne. He says, if the USA, wait, West hates feeling the name of preferred villain of the moment, then certainly they must be good. The West invades countries that oppose its policy, policies, and if someone opposes Western policy, they must be doing something right. Right? Such a reactive, this is very important, it's a reactive position, is unhelpful in discerning the true nature of a regime. Because the US West has targeted both progressive and reactionary regimes for intervention, sanctions, etc. Uh, just a note, I don't, this is leftist, leftist grief, duality, progressive and reactionary, I don't subscribe to this position. But what I want, to, uh, what I agree with here is that uh, the countries are targeted for various reasons, and those are various countries. They are not all the same. They are not the block, what Western anti-NATO interpreters like them to say. They are not, and precisely, this is very important. Furthermore, in the past two decades, when the West has intervened against the regime, it has often done so against one that the US State Department, military or intelligence apparatus, had fostered ties with at various points in the past. This includes Saddam, Bin Laden, Milosevic, Jovica Stanisic, one of the extremely important, he's an intelligence services guy, a Serbian, uh, he was interior minister, he was other things, he was very instrumental in starting war in Croatia. Muhammad Gaddafi, Muammar Gaddafi, Manuel Noriega, Bashar al-Assad, elements of the Iranian regime, etc. Okay, whatever you think about this. The fact is that USA uh, most often has a knack for attacking people that were <laughs> its main stooges in Yugoslavia. If anybody was close, had a close ear, had an ear of Americans, and uh, this, this Atlantic to Western uh, kind of countries uh, that, that are, that are lead, leading uh, the NATO. That was Milosevic, before him Ante Markovic, Prime Minister. But when Ante Markovic couldn't cope with the Yugoslavia problems and populism brought by Milosevic, Milosevic was, uh, came to the forefront and he was main interlocutor. Not, not Croatian leadership, uh, far from it. Croatia was very much isolated with decision to secede. Uh, not Bosnian, but uh, Milosevic. And this is something that must not be forgotten. Second thing, fetishizing sta statist and geopolitical worldviews. And this is the gist of my argument, and I will elaborate on this. Let me just quote it. Such position erase the human landscape on which interventions occur and reduce politics to a simple game between competing elites or states for primacy. This is, I, I say this 100% true, and this is what makes most of alt media now not only uh, fringe, not only wrong, it, it starts, it's starting to make them criminal. The only reason why using geopolitics in a way it's used in a especially pro-Russian or Russian-based alt-media, which is the most politically minded alt-media anyway, is that they don't have a power to incite, uh, to incite people. Because this way of thinking, geopolitics, that comes from Russia, in fact, uh, 
as I argued in my piece on Dugin, uh, to which uh, the second part will be coming out shortly, probably at the end of this week, or even sooner, maybe. Uh, this came from uh, a Russian media space of the 90s, and it was elaborated upon by Russian army and security services, intelligence services, and is apparently used uh, to to accustom a Western public via Russian media, ZRT and uh, other Western media who who got in this game to accustom the Western public to think in the terms of geopolitics. Uh, and w what uh, Constantin says here, it's erasing the human landscape. This is hundred percent true. This is hundred percent true, in because I continue the quote. In this vision, U.S. policy is simply guided by pure power and geopolitical concerns to secure oil resources, pipeline routes, etc. The world becomes a chessboard, and each country a sovereign space that the U.S. seeks to penetrate. But not only U.S., there is Russia. And uh, this uh, geopolitical way of thinking, if absolutized, and it is absolutized if you are in, under influence of the Russians because you are then under influence of Eurasianists who are, most notable being Dugin, used to promote this view and they formulated this view where geopolitics is a battle of money hand, good and evil, where West is bad, East is good, whatever that the, the hell the East and West are in the uh, in their eyes. Uh, I refer here to my piece on Dugin that you give it a look or listen because there is also an audio version. And chessboard, it's a chessboard for both sides. And we who are in the middle are really, excuse my French, fucked. And this is nowadays used, especially by alt media, to recreate the history, doing something that Holocaust revisionists uh, did. For instance, on the war on Yugoslavia, it's done uh, in, in a great, to a great extent, and that will be uh, an object of my future work in more detail, uh, especially some of the most prominent uh, warmongers on this side of this uh, Russian-based uh, media. Uh, and... There will be some, uh, there will be some, some criticism of those positions. But what is important here is that uh, this is uh, right. Geopolitics is uh, taken as a kind of all explanatory model, is uh, explanatory model for imbeciles. Imbeciles. It is dumber, dumber than 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 anything, uh, anything. Uh, we had in in the last twenty years where you 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 put everything on geopolitics because it it just gives you an opportunity to ditch the history to ditch the personal experience to ditch all the nuances and nooks and crannies and details of some, some historical event just to fit everything in the picture land versus sea. USA versus Eurasia, Atlantic versus Great uh, Eurasian landmass, and such things. And geopolitics, over overuse of geopolitics. Uh, when you ever you see geo too much uh, one uh, geopolitics to be somehow in the forefront of uh, analysis of something, you can be pretty much sure that that you are reading uh, fascist or pro-fascist in a most pejorative sense uh, geopolitics transcends fascism but it is the ultimate it is a tool of the ultimate uh, ideocratic ideocratic uh, politics now statism and geopolitics represent distinctly masculinist and militarized views of the world that are rooted in the imperialist and fascist strategic thinking they are the foundation of realist military planning. Now, masculinist, uh, dear Konstantin, I'm sorry, this is uh, idiotic. This is this leftist idea that you can give uh, put gender to science. <laughs> but everything else is true. It is a military way of thinking. You see... So in the geopolitics, uh, there is not good and bad. There is winners and losers. It's it's uh, uh, the cruelty itself as a chess. It is a subtle game of cruelty, 
of winning, of unconditional winning and unconditional lo losing. And most of these uh, leftoid, I would say, Western in, uh, uh, advocates of uh, free Syria or, uh, or I don't know, uh, Russia uh, as an antipode to the evil West and so on, are using geopolitics to argue this. And there is nothing humane in geopolitics. And they fail miserably because for their uh, people of choice to, to which they, uh, they give their, their attention and their quote-unquote uh, compassion, they, they in their minds kill off all others because I've seen this, for instance, this Syria uh, supporting people when it comes, for instance, in wars in Yugoslavia, uh, the, they take the whole groups, let's say, for instance, now we won't talk about Croats, let's say about Montenegrians or Konstantin's people uh, who are uh, completely uh, in league with Serbs in the first three years, let's say three or four years of the war. Uh, then they, they they left this alliance and they left this is more than an alliance that was a tennis identity because it is it was always a debate uh, between Montenegrians and Serbs and Montenegrians among themselves are they uh, separate people or Serbs Serbian Sparta and uh, uh, what I see in these uh, circles when they uh, these uh, pro Syria pro Russia or pro Russia pro Syria is a proper order uh, when anything when you have these uh, pro uh, anti NATO demonstrations in Montenegro, which are led by the worst elements of you can find there, with the, the, which doesn't make this pro NATO any better, but uh, they st uh, start uh, to to acquire this uh, habit of writing of Montenegrians in the quotation marks. Anybody who lives in Balkans know what it means when you take the name of some people and put it in quotation marks. That's a cult blanche of genocide. That will not happen in Montenegro because uh, not in a, uh, there is no political will to start the war. There is no resources to start the war between, let's say, Montenegro and Serbia. Something like that. But in the 90s, there was a will and a means. And those ideas accustomed people uh, to, 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 to an idea that they can, that those people deserve extermination or assimilation, which could even be the same thing. And I see those alt media personalities, independent media, that is Russian media personalities uh, using this. And they, this, is, this is the level of their compassion. Because in their game, uh, Russia is good because it supports Syria, Bashar al-Assad, and everybody who is not in this uh, momentary uh, political situation on this si same side was always against it, was always bad. And this is what they do. And this is because they are imbeciles and they are using the explanatory model for imbeciles. This is the reason. We'll go further into this in another longer video. So, Constantine continues. While it is certainly important to understand the distorted worldviews that drive policymakers, it is almost important, as is important, to steer clear of using them to guide our analysis. This is brilliant. This is not true. You don't play, you analyze the game, you don't play the game. Case closed. Very simple, but very, very hard to, to, to adhere to. Otherwise, the diversity and social struggles that shape the societies involved are simply reduced to functionalist interest groups to be manipulated by disordered power. And that's the situation how alt media views the world. In such a vision, everything that happens in a country targeted for intervention becomes either a function of the regime or an imperialist agencies. Local struggles are thus stripped of any autonomy and capacity for action and marginalized in discussion. You know what this means? This means they take your free will. 
this is uh, the, 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 the worldview I noticed, especially in Americans. Nothing can, this is the idea that nothing can happen without Americans. And I read some Syrian activists, uh, but really from Syria, say this, uh, and from Libya, uh, that were not terrorists, but they have a political probably political ideas that were you know, in collision with dominate uh, dominate uh, political power but not in this uh, in this uh, manipulated and genocidal terrorist uh, terrorist movements uh, they say this uh, and i know very well what i mean when they say uh, they think we cannot act on our own and uh, much of these conspiracy theories and such are in fact attempts to prove by Americans mostly and Anglophone people to a great extent to prove that they rule the world via negatio, via negativa. That is, they supposedly hate their countries of origins, but at the same time they propose that they cannot conceive that anything can happen in the world without the will of those countries. What well, it can, it can. And as I, I won't repeat myself, as I said in my previous previous video, well, people in Yugoslavia were to a large extent autonomous actors. And their free will was a paramount in bringing about the war and the guilt for the war to a large extent relies on them. But a possibility of redemption too. And if you consider that nothing of this happened as that idiot Tom Secker tried to, to point out it was all metal ploy, uh, by doing that, he stripped us of our free will. And to prove a point, I will be uh, a little petty and I'll show you uh, how he responded in detail refuted my video but this is just to prove the very important point okay let's say this is a video and here comes from the grassy knolls of northern yorkshire i can't even say that queen's english i love how you don't actually cite any facts oh. you just toss a world salad you probably meant word of criticism into the air and hope some idiots out there will buy into it. You are not fit to lick my boots. And answer, of course, then I figured you for a sandal kind of guy. <laughs> what to say, but you are not fit to lick my boots. Now, this, I don't know about you, this, this, this character is an Englishman from Northern England. I don't know about you, but this, Seems to me as something a colonial officer would say for to to to, to some black native uh, uh, under his thumb. He would not be saying. He would just kick him in the face with his boots. And now this guy is a leftist, uh, animal lover. He says gay marriages are not something that can be disputed. That's something that that is that belongs to, to homosexuals by right. He's against uh, war. This, 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 uh, hundred percent again uh, blanket. That I am again anti-war, anti this, anti that. Uh, humanist, uh, the advocate of the rights of working people and of the rights of marginalized groups. And I am the the the, the proud member of marginal people. Uh, and if I'm a war in England, I would be and the margin of society probably and I live on margin in Europe and I'm not fit to lick his boots and this this is uh, this is what he is he's an imperialist he calls himself a leftist but he's not leftist he's not leftist he's not or he is this is for quite possible for leftists to be egoist assholes uh, and the most of them who are whom I know are and this is this is just just uh, a red red coat officer talking down to some dim-witted native. And this is it. 
don't ever let somebody like this sell you on, on a narrative that he means good to some uh, to some small peoples or marginal group because for them those peoples and those groups are chessboard uh, chess chess pieces on the chessboard and they have some intellectual utopian view how society should be in their head because it's a logical it's a, a beautiful construction but actual people do not concern them because you don't say this i i don't say this to actual people i'm not leftist i'm not very compassionate i don't give a fuck about a lot of things among them people in libya people in syria i do actually but not that much that i would uh, i would i would uh, devote my life to that to writing about it but i would never say anything to anybody like this never so this was not uh, so much my personal gripe i hope you believe me uh, because he made a fool of himself of course uh, there is no need to refute him after this but just to pro to, to to demonstrate this point how people uh, sell themselves to be moral and big effect <clears throat> enemies for instance of the empire and so on being, being pure and simple imperialist and this is something that uh, Constantine calls anti-imperialist racism let's say he is close to truth assuming that those who oppose a given regime targeted for intervention are working for the west or are naive and need to be educated amounts to a form to an anti-imperialist racism which sees people in the rest of the world as unable to fully comprehend their own situation. This is the gist of it. Apparently, some progressives in the West, some, hmm, believe that they are in a much better position to judge what's really happening behind the scenes. This goes also for conspiracy theorists of the right. And what the people of insert country should do than those on the ground who directly suffer and chaff under brutal regimes. Adopting such a position effectively breaks down the vital transnational solidarities that need to be... Okay, the, those are leftist things. I don't really care about their solidarities. Given that the Western left has proven incapable of stopping their own leaders from staging militarized interventions, a more long-term strategy is needed. Okay, 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 okay. The gist of this is that people, some of the people I know and I collaborated with, uh, have this uh, notion that uh, not only uh, that they know better than you, they can. They, I, I could even give you benefit of a doubt. That it is possible, indeed, it is possible. But they are doing this on on the. Uh, to prove their theories, they pet theories. It's got nothing to do. While you are living through all this, they are constructing narrative, and this is why I hate this world narratives. And this is why on Kali Tribune, ad nauseum, I bother you uh, <laughs> with how wrong is this, because it is completely manifestation of ego. It is egoistic. It has no, absolutely no moral value. If you hear somebody that he is defending the narrative of Syria, of Bashar al-Assad, what he says has nothing to do with good and bad. It has everything to do with power. And this, I posit to you, must be rejected with contempt, with utter contempt which also has to be expressed and there will be more of this but in more detail on Kali Tribune now I only just want to announce that uh, once more that the second part of Dugin analysis is on its way due end of the week and then we'll do uh, unfortunately I will not stop there with Dugin although I, I really wished but there is some other method that's Dugin's occultism and we'll do an addendum to this two part analysis of foundations of geopolitics and this addendum will be for uh, <coughs> founded on his book uh, Hyperborean Re Revelation not translated in English uh, which is in turn based on work of uh, German uh, Hermann Wirth 
and partly on Julius interpretation of Julius Sevola, and we'll give this uh, explanation of this occult spin of Dugin's geopolitics because he ends the book with this, and I am obliged to to go into it. Anyway, that that will this is what awaits you in the in the, in the next week or ten days, and then there will be other things. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was uh, this was uh, this was uh, informative and thank you thank you for participating. This is Branko Malic, Kali Tribune signing out.